Hi, beautiful. I'm going to talk to you about the three pillars of Reiki today. So these are um, basically the, I guess what you could call the foundations of Reiki as a practice. Um, these were taught by Mikao Usui to his students. And the idea is that um, different to the five principles, which we've talked about previously, um, which you would remember as these, uh, really they are the principles to help students to show up and to live their life in the best possible way so that they can be a clear and pure channel for that Reiki energy, that unconditional love and light. Now, these particular pillars of Reiki are a little bit more um, about the ritual or, you know, the actual art of Reiki as a practice rather than just guidelines in terms of, you know, how we should live our life. So the first one is called Gasol, which you would have been familiar with when we are connecting to Reiki. So, you know, I've talked about this extensively before, but Gasol is really more than just a hand position uh, or a mudra. You know, it is more than just placing the hands in prayer position. It is about getting us into a space of reverence, of gratitude, um, almost like humble. It's really humbling. It brings us into our presence. It's a mindful practice itself. It's a meditative practice itself. Um, it's about coming back to our center and connecting back to our center and our truth and bringing us, bringing us back within, um, you know, in, when I say that, I mean like to let go of everything that isn't going to serve us for our practice of Reiki. So it's kind of bringing you back into yourself, but also remembering that you are connected. So when we practice Gasol, we are saying, yes, I know I'm connected to divine. I am all, you know, there is oneness here. And it is almost like that, uh, showing that appreciation for that particular practice and for that idea, that principle that we are one with Reiki energy. It is really about preparing ourselves for the Reiki session. So you can also think about it in terms of preparing our energy, our, you know, it's spiritual hygiene. It's saying, um, I am in a state where I can show up as my best possible self right now. Um, and allowing us to be in a in a frequency where we are optimal, you know, in a state where we can really be that channel for unconditional love and light. So that is really what Gaso is all about. It is also, you know, I see it as this beautiful gratitude um, opportunity for our teachers before us, our grandmasters, our ascended masters, um, our gratitude for our practice and the gift of Reiki, but also, um, you know, for ourselves, like thanking ourselves for showing up here, for um, practicing, for loving ourselves enough and committing to ourselves enough to be here and to show up. So that is that is what Gasol means for me as well. Um, there is also, so you know, I talked about oneness just now, but you know, going a little bit deeper with that, when we think about the right and left hands forming together, it is also about bringing everything together. So the light and the dark parts of who we are, right? The masculine, the feminine, the, you know, everything, the positive, the negative, like pulling it all together and honoring all of it. So really um, that's, you know, also understanding that we are connected and we are one with everything yes but we're also one and connected to the whole part of who we are and we honor that and all of it is sacred so that is gasol that is the first pillar mm -hmm. the second pillar is 
once we are prepared, we actually set that intention now of connection. And this is referred to as Reiji Ho. Reiji Ho. So Reiji Ho is that intention that we're setting of opening up to receive and to give unconditional love and light and healing. It is that intention that I am trusting in the wisdom of Reiki. It is the intention and the commitment that I am a pure channel. You know, I am trying my best to be a pure channel of unconditional love and light for the Reiki energy, for life force energy, for the universe's wisdom, for divine to work through me, for source energy to work through me. And I am trusting in that wisdom and I will not get in the way. That is what it's saying, right? It's all of that intention. It's setting the intention that you will be open to guidance and you will let go of trying to control the session as well. So it's all these things that you learn in level one about how to show up and have the best possible practice that you can. It's that real intention of unconditional love and light. Letting go, trusting, and just being Reiki rather than doing Reiki, being that expression of love. And number three is Chiryo, Chiryo. So Chiryo is basically the treatment. It's actually, you know, once we have connected, then we start the treatment. So it's the hands-on healing component, component. Um, you know, whether you're doing a distant healing or you're, or you're practicing in person with somebody, it is the treatment, actual, um, the actual, you know, practice of it and doing it. Um, of course, the treatment as well as, you know, everything else will advance as you advance your practice, as you continue and deepen your practices as well. It's going to evolve with you. So it will advance with your level of training as well. So your three pillars of Reiki will evolve as you evolve. So at a level one, it's going to look a certain way. At a level two, it's looking a different way, 3A. And then of course, mastership, it's evolving in a a completely different way as well. So all of these things are really, as uh, you know, as you can imagine, they are really important parts to have the best possible Reiki practice that you can, whether it be for yourself as self-healing or whether that be on another person. Now, we may not always go into a lot of detail when we are um, learning Reiki and applying these different pillars. Like you might not always um understand which part of the you know of the practice belongs to which pillar because they really do inter intertwine and they're you know kind of overlapping each other and as your practice deepens and as your you know as your understanding of reiki evolves as well which will happen and your connection will deepen and you will it, it'll look a lot more intuitive and it'll look a lot less, I guess, structured and, um, you know, it becomes less of something that you need to think about, but rather it's just who you are. And, you know, as soon as you set that intention to connect, it may not be necessarily that you're sitting in Gasol for a long period of time, you know, with your hands on your heart or, you know, you, you are setting that intention that, you know, you you end up just being Reiki. And so this is really, I guess, the, you know, the goal, the end goal here is to continue evolving that practice so that you do feel like, um, you know, you're not dependent on these notes and these hand positions and the structures of and, and the formal, you know, guidelines that Reiki is is providing you at each level, but rather you are 
truly embodying these practices and it just becomes who you are. So when when I say to you, what are the three pillars of Reiki and are you are you including them in your practice? It's it's just a yes, like it's it's a no-brainer. Of course I am, because I I am all of these things and I incorporate all of these things into, into my practice. You know, I show up with, with this intention of being open and willing to receive. I am Reiji Ho. I am honoring, you know, the sacredness and the, I have so much gratitude for my practice. I'm honoring the connection. I am also, um, you know, sitting and learning how to better my practice every time. And I am, being guided intuitively in that and listening to what is the, you know, what is needed and what is required. And I'm responding to that particular ailment or or what is, you know, what the person is asking for, or what I am needing. I'm listening to that and intuitively being guided every single time. Um, Reiki really, I don't think, is something that we ever truly master. I feel like, you know, every level we go through, we are simply just unraveling more gifts. We're unraveling more wisdom, more connection. Um, it's It just becomes this incredible opportunity for us to learn more and more and more about ourselves with each practice but also about others, you know, when we're practicing with others, but also about our relationship with others and our relationship with the divine and, you know, really our, our connection and, and how we, we, you know, sit in the world and what our, who we are and, you know, what our purpose is and, and what we want to get out of, out of our day-to-day life as well. We learn so much and, and it teaches us these three pillars not only teach us how to best be Reiki and how to be an expression of love in a treatment, but the idea is that we get to this point where we're continuously continuously bringing those learnings into our daily life. I mean, ultimately that's the point of Reiki, right? That is the absolute point is not how we show up, you know, on our cushion or how we show up on the massage table, but it's about how we show up and how we bring that, you know, what we learn and, and how, how we can be an expression of love, how we choose love, you know, in our, in our daily life and with our interactions with others as well. And that is where those principles come in just for today let go of the anger just for today. Do not worry. And these pillars will really help you to, um, I guess, cement and to work through some of those principles as well. I hope that has um, helped you in your understanding about the three pillars of Reiki and also um, how you can best use them as well. Have a beautiful day.